This morning, we introduce you to Kareem Rosser, a kid who grew up surrounded. by poverty and violence in one of the most challenging neighborhoods in America and rose to unprecedented heights. His memoir, Crossing the Line, at times reads like it's almost too hard to believe. And sometimes you have to put it down because the details are so difficult. But stick with it and you'll find what may be the perfect version of the American dream come true. Why polo? Well, that's a good question. Why polo? I, I don't know. Polo chose me. Kareem Rosser knows he doesn't look like what most people think of when they consider the ultimate sport of the elite. He wasn't raised rich or with almost any opportunities, except one. You know, the only place I ever felt free was when I came to the stables. His story, Crossing the Line, starts in West Philadelphia, a neighborhood where violence and addiction surrounded him, including at home. The way you talk about your mom in this book is unvarnished. I mean, you don't, you don't leave much out. Yeah, no, I, it was important for me to talk about our struggles, but also her struggles as a, as a young mom. You know, my mom I had her first child when she was 14. With little supervision, Rosser and his five siblings often miss school. One day, his older brothers, David and Jabbar, wound up in a park nearby and found this, a barn full of horses and a woman named Leslie Heiner. Is this a therapy program or a sports program? I, it's a, it's a little bit of both. This all you want on her? Uh. For nearly three decades, Heiner has been running Work to Ride, which gives kids like Rosser a chance. Kareem Rosser, looking on the near side for that ball. It's a team sport, and they can pretty much, when they take the reins and they go, all of that teenage energy just kind of goes with them, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. And <laughs> the kids agree to stay in school and help at the stables. In return, they get to learn the sport of kings. You want to try and match kids to the horses, you know, with their personalities. And horses all have personalities. He must be being good because I'm here. Nah, he was okay yesterday. And then what I try to do is to, you know, have the kids, you know, have a certain connection with a certain horse. And then, and a lot of times that progresses. Kareem Rosser was hooked immediately, in part because he was paired with a horse that changed his life. So this is the famous Cholo. This is the famous Cholo. What was it about the two of you that made such a great match? I think Cholo just understood me. I, I, I was always a very timid uh, kid uh, for a while, a very timid rider. Spurred by the chance to ride, along with Heiner's instruction, Rosser began to excel in sports and academics. But he was still surrounded by heartbreak. His best friend and fellow rider, a girl named Mecca, was murdered along with her parents in 2003. What struck me most was the fact that, you know, she was just a 14-year-old girl. And, um, you know, that that could happen to me too, that I was not invincible. And, you know, that, um, you know, people who were out there murdering people weren't just murdering adults, they were also murdering kids. I got her. Hi, Tilly, do good, babes. Not long after that, Rosser's brother and polo partner at the time, Jabbar, left work to ride for good, pulled back into the bottom, the West Philly neighborhood that is so hard to escape. Kareem stuck it out and eventually got into the Valley Forge Military Academy, where he was pushed to new limits and by a few kids who still didn't believe he belonged. He shares one of those stories in the book about a bigoted schoolmate. What did he say to you? Uh, I, whenever, if I remember correctly, I was called the N-word um, and some other very um, uh, just, you know, terrible racial slurs. Eventually, I, I just, I lost it. I told him to meet me in our dorm room um, and, you know, I just... You shattered his nose. 
Yeah, I, I shattered his nose, and um, he was probably one of the nicest kids at that school after that. And I'm not lying, and I'm not joking about that. <laughs> I believe you. I believe you. It's the neighborhood where you grew up. Yeah, yeah, West Philly, um, where I spent majority of my childhood, where I would travel from, you know, this neighborhood to the barn. And Rosser's drive on the polo field accelerated. And in 2011 came the big breakthrough. He became part of the first all African American squad to win the National Interscholastic Polo Championship. That was followed four years later by a college national championship at Colorado State University. Now a giant mural is dedicated to Rosser's accomplishments in his old neighborhood. Do you still come by and look at it? All the time. I mean, anyone who comes to visit us from outside of Philly, this is one of our stops. You know, we take her when to go try a cheesesteak, and then we got to stop past the mural and, and show it off a little bit. Today, Rosser has transitioned to the next phase of his life, working successfully as a financial analyst. So come up here and then go on the outside. Back at the stables, the unrelenting Leslie Heiner is still running work to ride. Pay attention where her work is still needed in the worst ways. I used to expect the children to come and bring a lunch. And then, you know, after a couple of years, I realized that they don't have stuff to make lunch with. So that's like one of those big things that, you know, the kids won't tell you that they don't have anything in the refrigerator. And so you have to provide that for them. In the bottom, not much has changed. This past March, Kareem's brother David, the one who first found the stables, was also murdered. And you still think about him a lot? Yeah, every day. I mean, it's, it's hard uh, not to think about him, especially, you know, he was murdered just blocks away from where my mom lives. My family's still there. I still hear everything that goes on. I still get phone calls. Regardless of how far I try to distance myself from the, the bottom, it's always going to be a part of me. If some little kid is out there watching, whether it's in the bottom or from, from somewhere else, and he feels trapped and... He's watching, he's like, I don't know, if I, Polo, though, I mean, I, what, do you, what do you tell him? You know, I mean, do whatever your freaking heart tells you to do, you know, and, you know, and one of the reasons why I wrote this book is it's, it's bigger than me. You know, I want to inspire kids who look just like me, come from where I come from, and knowing that they can go and dominate a sport that they don't think they belong in. It's crazy to see that mural in, in West Philly. Mm -hmm. So uh, Kareem doesn't uh, get to play polo much anymore, ride much anymore, because he's so focused on his career as a financial analyst, but is heavily involved in a new fundraising effort uh, for Work to Ride. As for Leslie Heiner, um, she says, I mean, she's been doing it for 26 years now. She says she's going to keep doing it mm -hmm. until she she's... Yeah. Uh, too tired, and I'll tell you, she is still on those kids big time, all the time. And it's serious. If you're if, if you're not doing well in school, if you're straying off the path, um, you're not riding, and you're not and you're not doing that until you are are performing well. And it's all those programs, though, that really stress. You know, you got to follow the rules. You got to follow the rules. Do the you're work. You're not going to get yeah. all of the the perks yeah. that you don't follow. Spirit, the rules. his fighting spirit to keep surviving despite everything else yeah. by finding that one passion. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing.